A stretch of land in Louisiana that used to be known as plantation country, where enslaved Africans were brought against their will and forced to work. Today, though, this part of the state is known as Cancer Alley, and residents whose ancestors have lived here for generations are now fighting for clean air. Some chemical companies are looking to new technology to help clean the air, but can they win over the skeptics? Our Ginger Z files this in-depth report from Cancer Alley. This lady over here died with cancer. This house over here, the husband has cancer and the wife has cancer. She worked at the park, she just went to the park. She had cancer and her husband had cancer. A distrust rooted deep in the polluted ground, air, and water of this southern land. So that's the two houses we've seen so far, both cancer. Both cancer. They are putting our lives on the line for industry, and we are the one that's dying. And that's not right. Sharon lives in St. James Parish in the corridor many call Cancer Alley. It's an 85-mile stretch from New Orleans to Baton Rouge along the Mississippi River. Community after community, all surrounded by roughly 150 industrial plants. According to the EPA, folks that live across most of Cancer Alley have a 95% higher risk of cancer from air pollution than the rest of America. EPA numbers also show that cancer risk is far higher in predominantly black and minority communities like St. James Parish. The UN has called what's happening here environmental racism, something President Biden has pledged to address. The disproportionate health and environmental and economic impacts on communities of color like Cancer Alley in Louisiana. We're all from here. Mm -hmm. We've living here all our lives, and they are scared. I know they are. What are they scared of? They're scared of industry. Yeah, industry have money. We, we, we don't have any money. Sharon and her community have been very vocal about what goes in their backyard, dedicating her life to this. I dedicated my life because I, I want us to be able to live in our community. While there aren't any new toxic fertilizer or plastic plants being built right now in Sharon's neighborhood, there will be a new blue hydrogen plant. It's all part of Louisiana's commitment to be carbon neutral by 2050. The state has the potential, and it's a vision that we not only share, but we fully support. Included in that massive push, one company announcing a new proposal side by side with the governor. And we'll have such a profound and positive impact uh, on the economy, but also on the environment. Air Products and Chemicals says their plant will be virtually carbon neutral. Air Products gave us the coordinates for this site. Right now, it just looks like a sugarcane field, but they say by 2026, they're gonna have a blue hydrogen plant here where they're going to be capturing 95% of the carbon that they produce. The hydrogen they make will become fuel for buses or planes. Air Products and Chemicals tells us that the CO2 they capture before it hits the atmosphere will then be compressed and transported via pipeline about 30 miles away to Lake Moripaw. Once it's there, the CO2 will be injected and permanently sequestered a mile below the surface. With the advanced technology that we're using, it allows us to capture over 95% of the CO2 and safely sequester 5 million tons a year of CO2 to create that low carbon clean hydrogen for the energy transition. Geologists agree Louisiana is a unique place to capture carbon. Let's just talk about Louisiana and carbon sequestration. Why what's under us might be different than the rest of the U.S.? Well, we know that in Louisiana. We know where the conditions are favorable. And what we have are layer upon layer upon layer of sand, silts, clays, limestones. And combinations of those make for storage and sealing. Dr. Cynthia Ebbinger is a professor of geology at Tulane University. She says it's legit. They're not having new noxious, you know, um, cancer-causing gases coming out of this type of facility. Not of this type of facility, no. But as with any project, there are concerns. Should people that live around the lake uh, that they're planning to put the carbon dioxide under, should they be concerned, even physically, about anything? Well. If we have pressure buildup from gases, we also can induce earthquakes. Yeah. And we don't want CO2 leaking upward, and we don't want to endanger the environment that's already right. quite fragile after previous activities. Could earthquakes be something that we would see because of carbon sequestration? 
We don't think so. And, and more importantly, the state of Louisiana, Louisiana doesn't think so. The EPA doesn't think so. The lowest uh, form of carbon would be to do what you're doing, but also power the making of it with renewables. Is that part of the plan in future? Well, at this point, in terms of the Louisiana project, we're focused on what we've announced, which is capturing over 95% of the CO2. The distrust and history so deep here, the people of St. James and surrounding parishes are questioning the motives and the proof. Carbon capture and underground storage are basically false solutions for the climate problem. Um, when I first heard of it, I was like, oh my God, can we do this? Can we really just snatch carbon out of the air and put it somewhere and it'll just be gone? Well, what we found out about carbon capture is just that it's too good to be true. That is Dr. Beverly Wright. She's been fighting the industries in her home state for more than 30 years. Today, she sits on President Biden's White House Environmental Justice Advisory Council. So you really believe that the industry that caused this problem would be the industry that's going to fix it? Not a chance. In the late 1980s, this area was home to endless sugarcane plantations that utilized the river for transport. Then it became heavily industrialized. Many, like Sharon, still remember the days before the petrochemicals came to town. We had clean air and we could drink water from the hydrant. We can't do that anymore. You can't go outside and sit on your front porch for a long period of time mm -hmm. because of the pollution, the smell. And uh, I would like to have that back. I really would. Tell me what I'm looking at. All right. Travis has lived here his whole life, and now he monitors the air quality in St. James Parish for a place called Public Lab. See, like, round, round on um, St. John Parish. Mm. With one of the largest producing ammonia plants and largest carbon emitter in Louisiana right in his backyard, he showed me his data. Man, I've seen a lot of impact. We followed Travis and Sharon to a rally in Baton Rouge. They're fighting for a greener Louisiana. These folks had a lot to say about industry planning to bring carbon capture to their already polluted backyard. Of course they're going to tell us that this is the, ne the, you know, the next best thing for us. They're really excuses to ignore the fact that we have to stop using fossil fuels. Stop pushing false solutions to the people. We have been through enough. Air Products and Chemicals says they're different and they are in this to change the community for the better. What would you tell them that Air Products is here to do? To help the people of Louisiana and the state of Louisiana play a key role in the energy transition. We all need energy. We all need that energy with a lower carbon footprint. And this is using technology that allows us to get there. Louisiana is embarking on the biggest blue carbon mm -hmm. plant. And Louisiana should have the best. The people of the state of Louisiana deserve that. So we hope that they use renewable energy to ensure that it stays the best. For Sharon, Travis, and so many more, this is home, and it always will be. This is our home. We love our home, and this is where we want to be. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.